the sea is a land of wonder, is a land of mystery. Mystery Island, who ha? Mystery Island, who? So much to discover, so much for us to see. God's truth never failing, all the way through history. Mystery Island, who ha? Mystery Island, who? There's a place you gotta see, a land of discovery. It's Mystery Island, Mystery Island. Searching for the ancient truth, handed down to me and you. Mystery Island, come on! Won't you come along with me? On a search to the island, for the clues hidden all around. Treasure, just waiting to be found. Mystery Island, who ha? Mystery Island, who? Mystery Island, who ha? Mystery Island. There's a place you gotta see, a land of discovery. It's Mystery Island, Mystery Island. Searching for the ancient truth, handed down to me and you. Mystery Island. How it works, a mystery island. The path is narrow, so stay on track. But the treasure is yours if you follow the map. God is faithful, God is strong. I can sing of his love all the day long. God is powerful, holy and true. I'm ready for mystery. How about There's you? There's a place you gotta see. A land of discovery. It's mystery island. It's mystery island. Mystery island. We're searching for the ancient truth. Hand it down to me and you.
Welcome back to our final day at Mystery Island, everyone. We're looking forward to sharing with you how trustworthy our great God is. Oh, Kiwi, what do you have with you today? A treasure chest. What's inside? Do you need help opening it? Oh, gummy bears. Well, I guess that's better than nothing. You know, Kiwi, today we are going to learn about how God is the greatest tre treasure and worthy of our complete trust. Let's look at our creature feature for today. I think you'll especially like it, Kiwi. You know, we can trust God's character at all times and know he's always with us. Our final animal pal, Trusty the Macaw, reminds us of that. Macaws are part of the parrot family and are known for their big, bright, colorful fe feathers. God gave the macaw feathers to keep the macaw dry and warm. Kind of like this poncho that I'm wearing keeps me from getting wet. <laughs> its feathers also provide sun protection and helps keep the with the flight and aid with camouflage macaws are large birds and macaws can grow over three feet tall from head to tail and can have a wingspan up to four feet wide that's as wide as some of our arms with one hand to the other they only weigh two to four pounds though because of their hollow bones if they didn't have hollow bones, they would be too heavy to be able to fly. God really did think of everything when he created them. Have you ever played copycat? Can you play copycat, Kiwi? Here, go like this with your one wing. <laughs> Another one. Good job. <laughs> Macaws are known for their intelligence. One way they prove they're smart is their ability to copy human speech and learn tricks. Pretty amazing, huh? Macaws typically live about 50 years old, though some have lived up to 90 years in captivity. How great would it be to be, have a pet that could be with you for your whole life? What a trusty friend. For just this once, stick out your tongue like this. The macaw has a powerful beak and a strong tongue that has a bone inside of it. They need a strong beak and tongue because their primary foods are seeds and nuts. Their beaks help them break these hard foods down into a digestible chunks. Keep your fingers away though. A macaw can easily break a person's finger and it's on its beak. Back in the day, macaws were a favorite pet of pirates and would be with them through all of their adventures on the high seas. Pirates have a deep bond with their trusted pets. In the same way, trusting the macaw reminds us that God can be trusted more than any other friend and that if you are his, God will never leave you. When the going gets tough, he is a faithful friend. <laughs> Aloha Islanders, welcome to the last week of Mystery Island. Let's see if we can remember what we have learned about God so far this week. Let's look at our map for reminders. The first week we found the number one. We know there is only one true God and he is not like Camo the chameleon. God never changes. So here's number one, right? And there's Camo the chameleon's cave. The second week we found an O on the map right here, which is the first letter in the word omni, which is just a fancy word for all. God is all knowing, all powerful, and always with us. He's everywhere. Now the third week, we found a crown. It's over here. Okay. And we learned that God is the king of everything. Holy, holy, holy. And last week, we found a heart. Do you remember what the heart was for? It's over here. Well, the heart shows us that God is love and he loves us. Now, let's play I Spy on the treasure map again. We're looking for a diamond. Can you find the diamond? Oh, it's somewhere over here and up here, right? God is like a diamond because he is by far the most valuable on earth. He is worth more than all jewels and money in the world. God is steady, a rock of love kindness and goodness he has. We can trust him, but we're going to hear about a guy who trusted God.
God's Story, David and Goliath. So part of God's story is about the time David fought Goliath. And it begins like this. David was the youngest of eight brothers. His job was being a shepherd, which meant he spent all day in a field watching sheep eat and roll around the grass. Meanwhile, some of his brothers were off with the Israeli army preparing for war against the Philistines. The Philistines were one of the toughest armies the people of Israel had to fight. So one day, David was taking food to his brothers because his dad asked him to. But when he got there, his brothers accused him of coming so he could watch the fight instead of the sheep. Since David knew in his heart he was just obeying his dad, he didn't mind being misunderstood. Anyway, while David was there, he saw a huge Philistine man, more than nine feet tall, step onto the field between the two armies. He was wearing a thick helmet and armor and carrying huge weapons. His name was Goliath, and he was definitely used to being the winner. David found out that Goliath had been stepping onto the field like this every morning for the past 40 days and saying, Give me a man and let us fight each other. But nobody from Israel was brave enough to fight him, even the king. Well, David didn't like that this giant was intimidating the Israelites. After all, they were God's special family. And because God was with the Israelites, they could have courage in any situation. So David, who wasn't even a soldier, told the king, I'll fight against him. Now, the king thought David was too small, but he really wanted someone to fight Goliath. So he gave in. And David knew he wasn't strong enough to beat Goliath by himself, but he believed God would be with him. So he said, the Lord will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. The king hoped David was right. He even had his own weapons and armor put on David, but they didn't fit him. David decided to go into battle in his regular clothes. That's how sure he was that God would help him. Anyway, David went to a nearby stream and chose five smooth stones to use with his slingshot. Then he walked onto the battlefield to meet the massive Goliath. When Goliath saw how wimpy David looked, he was furious. He thought he'd get to fight the Israelite's strongest warrior. He said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals. David might have looked like a wimp, but he was actually really brave. In fact, he was so brave that when he was taking care of sheep, he fought off bears and lions. Because God helped him protect his sheep, David knew God would help him protect this special family. David said, you come at me with a sword, but I come at you with the name of the Lord Almighty. He was explaining to Goliath that God was more powerful than anything. He also added that he would feed Goliath's flesh to the birds, which made the giant even more mad. Then David took a stone, put it in the slingshot, and slung it at Goliath. Goliath didn't even get a chance to swing a sword because the stone hit him right in the forehead and sunk in deep. He face planted straight into the ground. Nobody could believe it. Then David ran over, took hold of the giant's sword, and drew it from the sheath. He took the sword and cut off Goliath's head. David carried the head all the way back to Jerusalem. And when the Philistine army realized Goliath was dead, they started running away like a bunch of scaredy cats. The Israelites chased the Philistines, shouting loudly. They had won. God used David, who was just an average kid, to rescue his people. And that's the story of David and Goliath. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. David was a shepherd. He brought his brother's lunch. He saw Goliath. Goliath scared everybody. David wasn't scared. He knew God was stronger. David fought Goliath. He used one stone. God helped him kill Goliath. The Israelites won. God's people were saved. And that's a part of God's story. Everybody, what's going on? Hi, Rudy. We were just talking about trusting God. Hey, I learned the Bible verse about that. It goes, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Let's say it together. Okay. Trust, trust in, in the, the Lord, Lord with, with all, all your, your heart. heart. But I'm not sure what the word trust means. It means that you can believe someone when they say they'll do something. Like when your mom and dad say they're going to pick you up from preschool. They show up, don't they? Hmm. You can trust God. Or maybe like a pirate who trusts his parrot friend. Okay, let's see if you can trust me. 
I want you to fall backwards and I will catch you. Okay. Do you believe I'll, si I'll do what I say I'll do? I trust you. Okay, let's try it. Okay. Wait, I'm a little bit scared. Do you trust me to catch you? I guess so. Boys and girls, do you trust me to catch Rudy? Okay, let's try this. Oh. Oh. There, I caught you. <gasps> you sure did. Wow, I can trust you. You sure can. But there's someone who you can trust even more than me. That's God. He's perfect. He can never make a mistake with your life. He has all the power and the knowledge, and yet he uses it with love and goodness. Never in a bad way. Hmm. He has always got your best interest at heart. I can trust him even though I can't see him and don't always understand what's happening. Yes, you can trust him because the Bible says we can. And since the Bible was written by God and God is perfect, he's perfectly trustworthy. So remember, God can never, ever do anything wrong. Whatever you're going through in your life, whether it's scary or sad or crazy or glad, you can trust God. That's awesome. Okay, let's get our Bibles and see today's verse. Our Bible verse today is Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Okay. Do you want to do that with me, Rudy? Sure. Trust, Trust in, in the, the Lord, Lord with, with all your heart. heart. How about we nod our heads? Trust, Trust in the, the Lord, Lord with, with all, all your heart. heart. Okay. Do you want to play a game? Mm -hmm. Sure. We're going to wrap things up. And this game is yes or no. Okay. Okay. So, is God mighty? Yes. I think I can't hear you. Yes. Yay. Does God know everything? Yes. Can we trust God? Yes. Does God love you, Rudy? Very much. Aww. I'm so glad that you took the time this week to come to Mystery Island. We've learned so much about God. He is the one true God, and he never changes. God is great. God is almighty. Nothing is too hard for him. God is the king and the ruler. He's holy, holy, holy. God is loving, and he sent Jesus to be our saviors. God is immortal forever. And we can trust God always. Okay, we're going to pray. Thank you, God, for helping us learn more about you this week. Thank you that we can always trust that you are good. Please watch over us and take good care of our families as we go our separate ways. Amen. Well, thank you for coming to Mystery Island and have a, a nice rest of the summer. Remember, God loves you. Bye. Bye.
Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to week five already. Camp is almost done, but I really hope you've been having a lot of fun with us. Today in Deep Sea Crafts, we are going to do a picture of the beach. This here is our beach, and then we have our water. And underneath, we got, we got uh, seaweed, and we've got lots of sea creatures that God has created. He is so amazing. He's made all these wonderful, colorful creatures, some that live on land, air, water. It's amazing how God's creation, we can just see it all around us. So today in your craft package, you will have your blue paper to make your C with. You'll have a piece of sandpaper that you're going to use your glue stick on again and stick it on the top to make your beach. Then you're going to have a package and it's going to have some sea creatures in it and some green seaweed. So you can use your glue stick or the sticky backs on the foam craft pieces and you can stick them anywhere you want on your pitcher. And you can just remember what it looks like in the sea. Have a great day. Ow. Ow. I have to stop. I can't go any further. It's starting to hurt worse, isn't it? Yeah, I can't put any weight on my ankle now. It's I think it might be broken. It's starting to swell a lot, too. Charlie, I know you're hurt and scared, but we really need to keep on going. I can't go on, Sam. But we don't. We have to get back to camp before night falls. We don't want to be in this part of the island after dark. What? Why? Why shouldn't we be out in this part of the island after dark? Let's just say there are things out there that are not afraid of you. Oh. How far are we away from camp? Usually it'd be one hour, but with your ankle, about three to four hours. I had to step on one slippery rock. You went one way and your ankle twisted the other. Is there anything we could use to keep my ankle still as I lean back? Uh, you're a genius. Kate, can you please go find me some branches to use? This should help. How is this going to help? Won't it just make this falling worse? Trust me. You just need to trust me. There, try putting a little weight on it. Oh no, I can't. You guys just go back to the camp. I'll be fine here. We're not leaving you, Charlie. We're never going to leave you alone. Never going to leave me, huh? That seems like a promise from God. Yeah? Well, God never changes. And in his word, he says he'll never leave us. And since he's good and perfect, we can trust him with our lives. Kind of like I'm trusting you two with my life right now. Although, no offense, but God is much more trustworthy than any person could be. How can you trust God with your life? It's like David and Goliath. Yeah, David was seriously outmatched, but Goliath was huge. David knew to trust God that he would deliver him, even though David was a young boy and Goliath was a giant soldier. Did God help David to win? Yeah, God won. Yeah, and David knew to trust God because God is perfect and he loves us and he cares for us. We can trust God with our lives too. God loves us so much that he put friends in our lives that would never leave us, even though sometimes we will slip on slippery rocks and potentially break our ankle in the jungle. Yeah, God loves me and cares for me so much that he gives me great friends that won't leave me in the jungle. We can do this. There's a place you gotta 
much fun seeing Charlie and Sam and Kate go through this island adventure together. I'm sure Charlie will be okay. Now let's open up our final wild wow thought for our mystery island camp. Would you agree that sad or hard things sometimes happen to people in this world? Have you ever wondered why God let it happen? Well, here's the comforting thing. Whether you understand why something is happening or not, you can forever have confidence in the character of God. Why? Because he's perfect and cannot make a mistake. Let me repeat that. God is perfect and cannot make a mistake. That means he is perfect in love. He's perfect goodness. He's perfect kindness. He's perfect in wisdom. So even though we may not understand why something happens, God does. Listen to this verse. In Romans 8, 28, it says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose, all things work together for good if you have put your trust in God. He is trustworthy. Wow, that's pretty cool, right, Kiwi? We have one final cool contest you can enter for this week. This week's challenge is to find a way to help someone around you just like how God helps us. This could be making neighbors dinner or writing cards to encourage someone. Be creative. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Well, We've enjoyed having you here at Mystery Island, and we hope you have a great rest of your summer. God bless. Bye.